I want to enable you to build the ultimate page navigation menu in Power BI. Now that's why I'm doing a mini series on this topic. In the first video, we had a look at how to build an effective clean menu using the built-in page navigator. Then in the second video, I showed you how to take it to the next level by overlapping different elements over one another. Now in this video, I'm going to show you that one tool that you really wanna have in your toolkit so that you can build menus like this one over here or this one. Now let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now this trick is going to be about how you can effectively use shadow and glow for your menu buttons and also how to use them in quite unusual ways to achieve a certain creative effect. Now as a starting point, we take this menu over here that I've built in the first video of this mini series. So let's select it and then go to formatting. And then here under style, we are going to add a little bit of shadow and let's see what happens. Now you see we have a little bit of shadow at the bottom of our buttons and on the right hand side. But of course there are many more options here. So let's explore these options. Now the first thing that I wanna change here is the color so that we can see a little bit better about what all of these different options do. Now here, first of all, we see we have transparency and we have blur. Now, if I play around with the transparency, let's see what happens. You see when I move it to the left, it becomes more visible. And if I move it to the right, it becomes less visible. And then we also have the amount of blur that we want. Now, if I move this all the way to the left, you see we have just a normal line. And if I move this one to the right, then you see it becomes a little bit more blurry and also the rectangular shape becomes a little bit smaller. So it seems as if the button is shrinking. Okay, now this will be important for later. However, for now, I want to have no blur at all. So I'm going to shift this all the way to the left so that we have something that looks like a normal line. Now, if I then also put the transparency all the way to zero, then you see we just have a line at the bottom and a line on the right hand side. And the positioning of that line, well, we can change. Now here, the position by default is the bottom right. However, we can either go for one of these default options or we go here to custom and that gives us all of the options. So now we have here two new options, the angle and the distance. Now let me start off first with the angle and change 45 degrees to zero. And you see, we now have a borderline on the right hand side. Now if I change that number to let's say 90, then you see we have a line at the bottom. And if I increase this to, let's say 180, then we have the borderline on the left hand side. And if we put it to 270, then you see we have it all the way at the top. All right, and everything in between, well, then you see there are some variations of that. So for our purposes, let's put it to 120 degrees. And then here for the distance, if I drag this to the right, you see the line becomes thicker, to the left it becomes thinner, and so over here we can put it to, let's say 50. So now we can make these lines a little bit less visible by increasing the transparency. So I'm going to put that up to 75 degrees. All right, and then for the selected state, there I want to have zero transparency. So now what about glow? Let's also add a little bit of glow to the buttons and let's see what happens. So I'm going to turn glow on and you see that it looks, well, a little bit much maybe, but quite interesting because it overlaps with the shadow that we created before and we can use that because now if we open up all of the glow options we can make it white just like this and then for the default state i don't want to show it so let's switch to default and put the transparency to 100 percent and then for the hover state there i do want to show it but let's maybe go for white and then put the transparency a little bit down and you see now when I hover over it, it closes the rectangle. Now maybe when it's selected, we also want to have this, gl uh, this glow. So let me go back to select it, then put the transparency in the middle. So let's say 50%, just like I have for the hover. Now this is the standard way of using shadows and glow. However, you can also use shadows in a quite unusual way. Now, let me show you. Now I go here to insert and then here to buttons and I'm going to insert a second page navigation. All right, now the new page navigation, let's put it vertically from one another. So I go here to visual and then over here to pages, 
I'm going to hide the hidden pages. And then for the grid layout, I'm going to choose vertical. And then here, five padding, that is okay. And then I resize it so that it's as big as the previous menu. All right, so now with this selected, let me hide that other menu for the moment. All right, and then I take that new page navigation and we're going to make a few changes here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna go here to style and then here text, we're going to turn off. Okay, then we go here to fill. And then for the fill color, we choose white. Now this is going to be the color that I want to have for my special effects later. Okay, so white is fine. Then I go here to state, select it, and then I make that white as well. So now we can take that page navigator that we just added, and let's call this one effect. And let's make sure that this one is going to be below the menu buttons, just like this. And now I'm going to show the menu buttons again. You see, I didn't place them exactly over one another. And that's why we have a white borderline on the right hand side, which would be an alternative to the shadow uh, approach that we just took before. However, now I actually want to take the page navigation effect and I'm going to play around with the positioning. So here in the properties position, we can push it a little bit to the left by decreasing horizontal and we can push it down by increasing vertical. And now you see we have well, horizontal borderlines. And these horizontal borderlines we can also make smaller. Yeah, so over here, I can just take the effect, make it a little bit smaller, put it more or less in the middle, just like this. Now that gives us a little horizontal borderlines in between the buttons. But let's say we only want to have it for the selected item. Then I can go back here to the effect. And then over here, we can go to style, fill. And then over here, we want to have well, for the default, we no, we don't want to have a fill color, so I can put the transparency to 100%. But for the selected state, there I do want to show it, so there I put the transparency to zero. Now you see these little black lines, those are the border lines. Let's then also put the border off. And you see now we are only highlighting the selected item. Now the next thing that I want to do is that when I hover over the different buttons that I see a borderline at the bottom for the item that I'm hovering over on. And for this, we need to do a trick with the shadow. Now let me explain the trick first. I'm going to hide the actual menu buttons and then I go to the effect. And then over here on the style, we go to fill and we make it again white so that we see all of the buttons. Now I want to make these buttons smaller and use them as lines. But how to make them smaller, but still have them in the right position? Well, that's where shadows come in. Now I go over here to shadow, and then let's turn it on. You see, by turning it on, you see already that the buttons get smaller. And now we can start playing around over here with the blur. If I put the blur to the right, you see, it becomes smaller and smaller. And now if we resize the effect, so let's make it wider, you see we have horizontal borderlines. Now here I can put the blur all the way to the right, transparency also all the way to the right. And then here for the position, we can switch again to custom. And then for the distance, well also here we can drag it all the way to the right to make these borderlines smaller or just choose a distance that works for your menu. All right, so now we have these horizontal borderlines by using the shadow. So the shadows made the actual buttons seem smaller. So now I just wanna make them a little bit less wide, just like this, and put them more or less where the menu buttons are. And now I can unhide the menu buttons. So now we just have to position them where we want them to be, so right below the text. And once you have this, go to your menu buttons, style, and then here for the hover state, there you wanna make sure that when you hover over the button, that transparency is set to 100%. So let's see if this works now. I'm going to hover over one of the buttons and you see this bottom borderline pops up. So you have seen now two interesting ways in which you can use shadows and glow effects for your menu buttons. Now let's go again back to that first example and let's see what else we can do. Now first of all, let's get rid of the shadow again. So I'm gonna go here to style and then shadow I'm going to turn off. And let's also turn glow off for the moment. All right, and now I'm going to take that effect from before and I'm going to place it over my menu, just like this. And now I'm going to hide the menu buttons again. Now this effect also needs to be below the menu buttons like we had it before. 
And now we're going to change the shape for our effect. Now let's first put the transparency down to let's say about 50%. And then here for the blur, we can put it all the way down. Let's keep a little bit, let's say five. And then here the angle I'm gonna put up, let's say around 220. And then the distance somewhere in the middle, so 50 pixels. And then for the color of the shadow, we can go for white again. And then here for the fill, let's go for the same color as the background, our dark blue color. All right, then here for the selected state, I also need to pick the same color so that we have, well, a borderline on the left and a borderline at the top. And then we can resize these borderlines in any way we like. All right, so let me resize a little bit. I see there's still a bit of a hover effect that I wanna get rid of. So I go here to hover. So I put the color over here to the same color as the background. So now we can unhide the menu buttons again. And then I take the effect and I can start putting it in the right position where I want to have it. So maybe here in the top left corner. And we just have to resize it so that it has the same size as the background buttons. And then we can go back to the menu buttons. And then here under style, there I would like to add a little bit of glow. And I want to see the glow in the default state and put it down the transparency to somewhere in the middle. So let's say 50%. And that helps me then also with the positioning of the effect. So you see after you position it correctly, it looks pretty good. And now the next thing that I would do is go back to the menu buttons and then style. And then over here, we want to have for the default state, we don't want to show the glow. So we are going to put the transparency to 100%. However, for the hover state there, we do want to show it. So now when we hover over it, you see it fills up nicely the rectangle. And of course, this has many different variations. You could, for example, start playing around with mixing different colors so that it looks like this or like this, or maybe you want to have a different positioning of the lines and make it look like this. So you see this trick opens again many design options that I hope take your page navigation to the next level. And sometimes it's just thinking a little bit outside the box to make it really look good and stand out. Now I hope that you got a lot of value out of this video. And if you did, consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.